Plants have to capture a number of essential nutrients from the environment around them. And in this tree, the leaves are there really to, to capture the sun's energy and drive the conversion of carbon dioxide into sugars. But underneath, below this shoot of the tree, we have a very large root system. And the root system is as large, or uh, if not larger, than the shoot of this tree. And that root is associating with the soil. Not only is the root interacting with the soil environment, but it's also associating with a number of microorganisms. A really good example of the association between, uh, between this tree and its beneficial uh, microorganisms are these toadstools. And these are the fruiting bodies of an ectomycorrhizal fungus. And this fungus is associating with this tree, where the, the hyphae of the fungus are interacting very closely with the roots and they're helping this tree capture nutrients from the soil, particularly nitrates and phosphates. One of the challenges for this birch tree is to associate with the right microorganisms. There are plenty of microorganisms out there that will take the nutrients from this tree but give nothing in return and indeed will cause disease to the tree. So the challenge for this tree is to find the right microorganisms to associate like these ectomycorrhizal fungi that will benefit the plant but to not associate with the pathogenic microorganisms that will cause disease to this tree. The interaction between plants and mycorrhizal uh, fungi is ubiquitous within the plant kingdom. In other words, most of these plants in this field will be associating with mycorrhizal fungi that are helping these plants capture nutrients from the soil. But there are some plants that can do something in addition, and that's in particular plants in the legume family that can associate with nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Those uh, nitrogen-fixing bacteria convert nitrogen in the atmosphere around us. And to show you that, I'm going to dig up this clover plant. So the clover plant has in its roots many, many nodules. And all of those, those nodules are little nitrogen-fixing factories that convert nitrogen from the atmosphere into ammonia. So this clover root is associating with both nitrogen-fixing bacteria, which you can clearly see on these nodules of the root, but it's also associating with mycorrhizal fungi. And you can't see the mycorrhizal fungi. For that, we'll have to look under a microscope. Every time a seed germinates, it has to find these microorganisms and communicate with the microorganisms present in the soil. And that's what our research has been focusing on. We've known for a while that the mycorrhizal fungi produce a diffusible signaling molecule called MIC factor and that nitrogen-fixing bacteria produce a diffusible signaling molecule called NOD factor. And these activate a common symbiosis signaling pathway. That's a single signaling pathway. At the end of this signaling pathway is a transcription factor. And uh, we've known for a while that there is a transcription factor that has a specific function in the nitrogen-fixing symbiosis and activates gene expression specific to the nitrogen-fixing symbiosis. The work in these two papers in current biology describes a transcription factor that has a specific role in the mycorrhizal symbiosis that transmits the signal from this common signaling pathway to activate gene expression associated with the mycorrhizal symbiosis. And furthermore, what we've shown is that the targets of this transcription factor are involved in producing a signal that is then recognized by the mycorrhizal fungus that facilitates the fungal colonization. When we found that the gene was important for mycorrhizal fungi and their interaction with plants, it was very obvious to us whether it's also important for pathogenic filamentous pathogens. So we tested the unrelated Oomycete pathogen Phytophthora palmivora, an important disease agent in the tropics, and we found that indeed this gene is important for both beneficial and pathogenic interactions. Our work has given us the signaling mechanisms and the signaling molecules that this plant utilizes to promote beneficial mycorrhizal associations. The biggest surprise from our work was the fact that those signaling molecules were also used by pathogenic microorganisms to facilitate their colonization. And it highlights the real challenge for this plant to promote the beneficial associations, but at the same time restrict pathogenic associations when the mechanisms are conserved.